What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. <clears throat> gotta eat. Gotta clear their throat. <clears> throat> gotta talk about some trade targets today. All right, we haven't done a video like this in a minute, but the last few weeks we've been spending our Wednesdays redrafting our fantasy teams on Underdog. Underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code BDG when you deposit 10, get a $10 match, and you'll play some over under, some player pick games, whatever. We're talking about trade targets for fantasy football right now. In particular, three dudes that I am trying to buy in my leagues at this very moment. Two wide receivers, and for you super flex homies, we've got a quarterback. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you don't hate the video. So let's tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling and let's eat. If someone wants to drop timestamps, go ahead. But I'll let you know, it's rude to skip introductions. Chase Claypool of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's got a buy coming up in week seven, okay? And I understand it might be tough to just keep these guys in the chamber, right? Keep them on mind because right now I know there's a lot of buys going on. There's a lot of injuries going on. So you might not have the luxury of trading for a guy on a buy so that he just sits on your bench for an extra week. So maybe next week we do it coming off the buy. People forget about him. Got the buy in week seven. Chase Claypool right now. I want to I want to give you a 16 game pace stats from where he's at right now. He feels like he's been very much an afterthought this season. Uh, maybe that's because the only team I have him in, the way I have my roster constructed, he actually hasn't cracked the starting lineup except for this week when he disappointed the shit out of me and ruined my entire family's ancestry. And now it feels like a, for, a forgotten project at a point, right? His 16-game pace right now, 134 targets, 70 catches, 1,216 total yards. The problem is he's only scored once, so he hasn't supplied you with those big fantasy days. Last year, he was putting up three touchdown days. He was getting fucking rushing sweep touchdowns on the other side. We've got people going fucking crazy outside right now. There's got to be a fire or a shooting or something right now, but we're going to power through because that's what we fucking do here at Big Dog. Those are the 16 game pace numbers that I don't think we really uh, are taking into account with Chase Claypool right now. Things are going to get better. Juju's out for the year, so the targets are going to continue to compile from Mr. Chase Claypool. We don't have to worry about inconsistent volume numbers from him. Week two, he started heating up, right? Week two, nine targets, only three for 70, just missed a big play touchdown, could have been a much, much bigger day. The next week, week three, 15 targets, nine catches, 96 yards. He misses week four. Week five has the explosion. Six targets, five catches, 130 yards, and a tug. After that game, everybody starts him in week six. Seven targets, two catches, 17 yards. It was an ugly performance all around from Ben, especially throwing a clay pool. A lot of things didn't sync up. Should have had a few more big plays. It was a couple inches away from, you know, a couple inches away from a couple things. That's the story of Chase Claypool's life or his his season up to this point. Dealt with a hamstring injury early on. He left the game, went into the uh, locker room, came back out. So maybe that was hampering him a little bit. One of the interesting notes here, though, is that with Juju out, Chase Claypool saw 16 snaps from the slot, which is by far and away his season high. He was at, I, I believe, his season high before that was nine. So we're going to see him get more involved in the slot with Juju out in three wide receiver sets. And he was playing on basically every two wide receiver set, which is really, really good to see for the first time this season. The big days are coming. All we need is the touchdowns to start piling in you know you needed one of these three wide receivers to be out of the picture in order to be confident in any of them right Deontay Johnson was always a must start but you either need a Claypool out to feel good about Juju or Juju out to feel good about Claypool and I'll write off this game because he was coming off of three hot games one missed game obviously but weeks 13 through 17 Steelers play Baltimore so you might look at him be like great pass a uh, really good pass defense coming off the Charger game but at this point in the season they've allowed the eighth most passing yards per game on defense and that is including the Justin Herbert game on Sunday. Then they get Minnesota, Tennessee, Kansas City, and Cleveland is week 17. In Cleveland, you might say, hey, another tough game, but they've allowed the fifth most fantasy points to the wide receiver position this year. So the last five games of the season, I think are plus matchups for Chase Claypool. I think the volume is going to be there. Again, a 16 game pace, 134 targets, 70 catches, 1,215 total yards. We just need the tough touchdown numbers to increase a little bit, and we will see that happening. All right. The other dude, who is starting to get more and more comfortable with his offense is a rookie quarterback by the name of Trevor Lawrence. If you look at what he did in weeks one through three, if you look at what he did in weeks four through six, and you just look at the fucking games while he's playing, you're seeing his comfort level 
Like this, just Jacksonville team is starting to put the offense together a little bit more. They're stopping being so fucking dumb in terms of their personnel usage and their packaging and their trotting Carlos Hyde on there for James Robinson. Things are starting to click a little bit for the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. And it is thanks to Mr. Trevor Lawrence. All right. Fantasy points per game, 11.1 to 18.5. We're talking about weeks one through three versus four through six. Rushing yards per game, 15.3 to 25. Completion rate. 54.2% to 66.3%. He's getting comfortable in every aspect, and it is turning into more production, especially the zone reads, especially the RPOs. He's getting really comfortable holding on to the ball and running with it, especially near the red zone, especially inside the 10-yard line. We're going to continue to see that be a big part of his game. Again, the last two years at Clemson, Trevor Lawrence ran for 17 rushing touchdowns. He's going to continue scoring touchdowns by the goal line. He's going to continue to be the Josh Allen of the Southeast. Those are going to continue to come for him. And as he gets more and more comfortable with the weapons, he gets more and more comfortable with the offense. He's going to start putting up ceiling games for Jacksonville. And you look at the last four games of the season, the fantasy playoffs, Tennessee, Houston, the New York Jets, and New England. New England, tough defense, obviously, but you'll take three or four juicy, juicy matchups for this offense. And for Mr. Trevor Lawrence, clear as day, Trevor Lawrence is a buy target for me. Obviously, we're talking about super flex leagues. You're not buying Trevor Lawrence in one quarterback leagues because the replacement level numbers for like the quarterback 10 through 13 is sitting there on the waiver wire, most likely. So super flex, clear as day, just like these beautiful glasses from Felix Gray. Trevor Lawrence, clear as day. Buy some glasses, Felix Gray. I love Felix Gray, okay? Y'all have heard me talk about them for years at this point, before we were even working together. These are blue light blocking glasses, okay? So if you are like me, some of you guys are back in your offices now, you're staring at double monitors, you're staring at your cell phone, you're staring at your iPad, your phone screen before you go to sleep at night. It's hard to sleep. Your eyes get droopy. Your eyes get tired. I used to get so, my eyes used to get bloodshot red by the end of the day. My mom would thought I had a crack problem and I got blue light glasses from Felix Dre and that no longer happens. My eyes don't get tired. My brain does not get tired. You put them on at night when you're watching TV or if you're on your cell phone, whatever it is. And basically the science behind it is this, right? I'm really into biohacking, okay? Anti-aging, how to live longer, how to be healthier with your body, right? And sleep is obviously one of the pillars of taking care of yourself. And basically when, when there's no lights, right? When it's dark, your body says, okay, it's time to go to bed. We need to produce melatonin, all right? So some people take the supplement and that's what it does. Your body's not producing it. So you take melatonin and that's what puts you to sleep. That hormone, that whatever. However, when you're looking at blue light, blue light, what it does is it stops your body from producing melatonin. The screens, your TVs, it gives off blue light, right? When that goes into your eyeballs, it says, no, we are not producing melatonin. We're trying to stay awake here, all right? We need more energy for the body. So these glasses are a protective shield from the blue light entering your body. So if it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever the time may be, you need to start producing melatonin so you can get a good night's sleep. That's the best scientific explanation I can give you. This does not let blue light in. So your body is not saying, ah, fuck, we got blue light. We need energy. It's saying it's dark here. There's no light coming in. We need to start producing melatonin. That's the beauty of these things. I could not recommend them more enough. Go check out FelixGray.com, all right? The link will be first thing in the description. Michael Pittman should be first thing in your trade target column for whoever has him in your fucking league, all right? This Colts offense starting to click a little bit. Wentz looks good. Wentz looks good. Don't make me say it again. Wentz looks good. He's finally fully healthy from all the the ankle problems that the fucking Lieutenant Dan shit he was dealing with in the summer. He's good to go. Offensive line is getting healthier. Michael Pittman was starting to ramp up and starting to look like a legitimate top 15 fantasy wide receiver. Definitely from a volume level, like Chase Claypool, didn't score a lot of touchdowns. That's that's the consistent theme you're going to see with a lot of players who are on like trade target lists. The guys who are getting volume, the guys who are clicking with their teammates, but not scoring touchdowns, right? That's what Michael Pittman is right now. And he's coming off this game, this shit game against the Texans. Now, anyone could have seen this coming, right? Because against the Texans, you just run and run and run and run and run. Colts are already a run-heavy team, but you play against a team that you're going to put up 31 points, and they're not going to score, your game plan is going to be strictly to run the ball, all right? They ran the ball 26 times in this game compared to 20 passes. Now, that is a 56% run rate. Their season average, including this game against Houston, is 42% on run rate, all right? So that's not going to be the norm. They're going to pass the ball a lot more. Michael Pittman is putting up a monstrous target share in this offense. And now you have Hilton and Paris Campbell banged up. 
So even more targets are going his way. This is going to be a really, really condensed pass funnel, mostly to Pittman. And he's on the verge of a real breakout uh, campaign. He's a possession receiver. He's a downfield receiver. And I expect him to get a few more red zone looks going forward. You start in week seven, their schedule. They get the 49ers, who like don't really have a secondary. They're getting a little bit better. Tennessee, the Jets, Jacksonville, Buffalo's brutal, obviously. Tampa Bay, Houston again, New England, Arizona. All right, so a very friendly schedule over the last nine, 10 weeks of the season. So if you can grab Michael Pittman right now, I would absolutely, absolutely do so. I think he'll be a legitimate top 15, at worst top 18 wide receiver for the remainder of the season. Him and Wentz are showing real, real chemistry there. Wentz is getting better. Wentz is getting healthy. This entire offense is looking a lot better. So Michael Pittman, absolutely a buy for me right now. So we have Chase Claypool, we got T. Law, and we've got Michael Pittman, and we've got Felix Gray on our face holes. FelixGray.com. Link will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, put the D in it. I love y'all. I'll see you tomorrow.